And you're very welcome back to the Agriland Pavilion here at the National Ploughing Championships in Rathaniska. We're going to change topic now on the stage because we're going to focus on agri-technology, ag tech as it's known very commonly, and the innovations that we are seeing in this very, very fast moving pace space. And joining me here on the stage today is Podrick Hennessy, and Podrick is chair of AgTech Ireland. We are also joined by Kieran O'Donoghue from AgriTech Cluster, but he is also the educational outreach manager with the Munster Technological University, MTU, uh, based at the Kerry campus there. And beside me here is Mark Hanrahan, and Mark is a sales engineer with the multi award winning Unison Process Solutions. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here in the AgriLand Pavilion. Uh, Podrick, I might start with yourself as I said this is a very fast moving sector the innovation that we're seeing here on site and around the country from companies involved in ag tech it's I suppose the demand that's coming from the farming sector and the pressures that are on the farming sector companies are reacting to that demand and bringing forward new technologies all the time. I suppose ag tech has only really uh, been started we spoke about in the last uh, you know five years you could say ag tech has always been around. You know, at one stage, a, a thrashing machine would have been ag tech, but it's more and more focused with the adoption of uh, sensors, artificial intelligence, um, and communications from farms really has brought it now to the fore, where you're moving some of that technology that just happens on farm to the cloud, where you can actually analyze what's going on and, and return valuable information to the to farmer. With the challenges that, that are there to be solved over the next um, 10 years for sustainability, we can't ask farmers to work any harder. We have to work smarter. And it's industry bringing solutions that will help farmers work, smart, work smarter to uh, hit those sustainability targets. So is that pressing the fast forward button on the innovations and, and the, the thinking and the concepts? Because the demand is there, the, the clock is ticking when it comes to climate uh, emissions and uh, everything that the, the pressures that are on the farm system but also uh, labour shortages we've a whole cacophony yeah. of, of factors here. A absolutely and all of those are accelerating it. Um, industry will always respond if they see a demand and, and we all know this demand is coming that there's challenges that simply have to be solved so industry is, is trying to step to the front and going right we're, we're, going to, um, we're going to bring solutions to the market that can help with all of these challenges. Yeah, and Kieran, I might bring you in here as well. I mean, this demand is coming from farmers. We see the appetite on the ground here for information from the farming community. Uh, they're engaging with companies such as, as Unison, and we'll, we'll hear about that in just a minute. Uh, you know, in, in terms of the appetite for farmers to, to get on top of the latest technology, as, as Padraig rightly said, that's driving this innovation. Absolutely. I mean, the appetite is there. Um, I think the, the key thing is to get the match right between the technology solution and the application and, and having the right, I suppose, fit in that respect. Uh, there's a real keen interest in, from the farming community to embrace the technologies. These technologies, I guess, can help us meet these big challenges we were just talking about. Um, and, and there's various different technologies out there, you know, from sensor systems, camera systems, gathering information that can help uh, translate this, uh, this information we have into usable decision-making information for farmers. And, and yes, far farmers are very keen to know more about the technologies. We've seen it here over the last three days. There's huge interest in the, in the Enterprise Ireland innovation arena and all the different innovations that are on display. And uh, I think it's, it's, a very, it's great to see it and it's very important going forward. Uh, because I think in the past we may have, you know, to produce more food, which we need to do for feeding the growing population, we, in the past we might have intensified more in what we were doing. But now we know we need to balance that with protection of the environment, uh, reduction in the emissions uh, now to meet the target we have of 25% reduction. Um, we know that we need to do things differently and technology can be a, a huge part in that uh, change that needs to happen. Tell us a little bit about the agri-cluster. What, what is that? Yeah, so what it is, I guess, is a, it's a, a cluster that's focused on accelerating the growth of the agri-tech industry in Ireland. Uh, so we see that Ireland is very well positioned to, uh, to have an agri-tech industry that's known internationally, that is global recognition. Um, we can do that because we have a strong agriculture background and we can match that with our technology skills uh, and developments that we have here in Ireland. Um, what we're doing in the Agritech cluster is we're creating a, a, an organization, we're a new organization just created last year into the second year now, and our focus is on bringing industry 
together with knowledge providers like researchers, like consultants, together with government supports and community input, um, and connecting all the dots um, in that space to support the growth of the companies. Okay, and let's talk to, to a company uh, here beside me, Mark Hanrahan uh, from Unison Process Solutions. As I mentioned, a multi-award winning company. What does the company do? So basically what we specialise in, we're an engineering company based in Limerick and we manufacture and process in equipment. So we manufacture them in our base back in Limerick where we have 25 employees at the moment. And as you said, it's all about innovation and we started off by building a compact pasteurizer for small dairy farmers that wanted to sell milk direct through the traditional glass bottle. But what we've found in the last 18 months is that there's more emphasis on actually selling direct and farmers want to get more value for their milk. And the technology that you mentioned we won a couple of awards for was the Smart Micro Dairy. And what it is, it's a modular unit where a pasteurizer and a vending machine are connected. So the farmer has minimal contact with the milk. All they have to do is connect the raw milk outside, controlled by an app on their phone, and then that's it. And once the milk goes low inside the vending machine, they'll get a text message to their phone, and they can decide how much milk they want to put into the pasteurizer then after that. Fantastic. So this is all about saving time uh, for the farmer, but also becoming very, very efficient as well. Exactly. And with regards to this plug and play system, once the customer gets it on site, they're up and running within one day, depending on the department of regulation. But what customers really want to do, they want to get more value for their milk. And that's why they're going direct to the public. And it is something that has been massive in the UK for the last number of years. And there was one farm in Ireland that brought it in 18 months ago. And we've seen five farms in Ireland actually doing it at the moment. And before the tail end of the year, there'll be another eight. Fantastic. Podrick, I might bring you in here. When we see a company like Unison um, supporting these companies, uh, are we seeing enough support from government here for, for companies starting off? It's um, quite simply, I don't think so. I think, um, I think AgriLand is, or, or, or AgriTech has only started to be recognised as an industry on its own. Um, Enterprise Ireland only this year has created an AgTech division. Um, so there's a dedicated person in there now, uh, which, is, which is fantastic from Enterprise Ireland. Um, the local enterprise offices are fantastic at giving grants, but uh, ag we can become a world leader in ag tech if, if we get all of the stakeholders together. And that's all across government, um, you know, Chagas, Enterprise Ireland, local enterprise offices and industry together. We have the capabilities in Ireland to create a world-class ag tech ecosystem. We have, a, we have a world-class technology system, we have a world-class agri system, we can combine the two and, and be absolute world leaders in the market. But I suppose for, for young companies as well starting out, like all companies are, are facing increased costs, we're looking at increased energy costs mm -hmm. as well. I mean, that's a huge pressure on companies. It's, it's a huge challenge going forward and even the access to, to finance is going to become harder um, in the next year or two as well. Um, I know some VCs are starting to pull back away from um, ag tech because it's a slower burn than, than many of the other sectors out there. You know, you can scale fintech quite quickly. Ag tech, it does take a bit longer, I think, to scale. It's farm by farm. However, um, it's solving some, some really uh, important challenges out there. So it, it is difficult. The energy, energy crisis is, is certainly difficult for a lot of companies, especially if you're a high energy user. Um, but it's just a challenge that uh, business models will have to slowly adopt to and uh, to get around it and, and, and get through it. Kieran, uh, Podrick mentioned a, a very interesting uh, topic there, funding, getting seed funding to get something off the ground. As you said, it, it takes a lot of uh, confidence, it takes a lot of belief in a, a startup company when, when they're in that early, early stages. But that's, that's vital to, to make sure they survive and that they can become something successful like Unison, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, there are questions that we're getting day in, day out. How do we get access to funding to do an innovation project? How do we get access to funding to... Um, invest in a new piece of equipment for production process, for example. Um, and, you know, that's, I guess, in the agritech cluster, that's what we're, one of the things we're doing as a service. We're offering that sort of advice to companies. Uh, if, they, if they would like to develop a new idea, be it for a product feature uh, or for a process improvement, maybe to add some digitalization or uh, automation, uh, we can help support the development of the project idea. And then we can also help um, you know, pursue the appropriate funding channel for those ideas. And in terms of the demands from, say, angel investors or, or seed funds, are, are they looking for green credentials, Podrick? Are you seeing that kind of demand? Um, yes, I think more and more, especially in the last couple of years, uh, or, or in, in even the last six months, um, I suppose, with the targets that need to be set. 
Uh, a lot of funds now are looking at the, at the green credentials across all of their investments because the world is changing, it's changing fast and, and they need to react to that. Um, so yes, it's, it's, it's a very, very important criteria now, I think, for a lot of VCs. And are you seeing that, Mark, that demand from, I suppose, from the farmers as well and, and from the, the general public that these uh, pieces of equipment, that they have to have the green credentials? Absolutely, and at the end of the day, as the lads touched on, it's all about energy crisis and what a lot of people at this moment in time, and they're being put under pressure with regards to the emissions, trying to reduce. So they're trying to adapt and think, look, we need to get ahead of this before the clock is ticking. So that's why these guys are thinking, look, how can we adapt our farm and make it more sustainable? And even one farmer that I spoke with, he wants to actually bring the family back to the farm and create a viable business to actually bring his family members back to the farm. Yeah. And he says he wants to, look, he doesn't want to be a millionaire, he just wants to live comfortably and live comfortably for his family and he's actually succeeded in that within 12 months. Yeah, so absolutely. That's what we're seeing more and more of this, this day and age. Yeah, and, and, and I suppose in terms of patents, um, Podrick, that's obviously something that, you know, I have a great idea, I need to protect it. Um, I've seen this quite often that uh, people, are, people won't even share their idea in case somebody steals it. If you lock your idea in your, in your safe at home, do you know what, there's no point having the idea. You do need to take a chance at times, absolutely you should have IP protection on it uh, where you can, but you do need to bring it a certain stage before you can even go down that route. Um, so it's locking an idea away is no good. Um, you need to get it out there. Speak to people about it. Speak to trusted people. Don't don't broadcast it to the world. But you certainly need to try and act on that idea um, without lo without locking it away. And um, so it's, that's really really important. If there's no point having an idea unless you act on it. Is the patent process tricky? It is. I'm I'm going through it myself uh, at the moment. Um, so it's important to get a good IP. Uh, uh, advice to be honest of what sometimes a patent isn't the right way to go um, in my opinion a patent is only as good as, as how much money you're willing to put behind it to fight it um, so it can be an initial barrier but um, there's other other elements of trademarks um, design patents so there's a lot of different ways you can help protect uh, as well as trade secrets so you don't always have to go down the patent route and um, because a worldwide patent can be an extremely expensive proposition yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's talk about entrance into this sector. We obviously need staff. We need people to, to help these companies. As Mark was mentioning, 25 people you were saying employed down in Limerick, which is it's fantastic. Um, I suppose third level, you know, obviously you're in the Monster Technological University there, Kieran. And uh, in, in terms of being an incubation ground, a breeding ground to, for the, the next generation of, of mm -hmm. innovators and for, for staff for these ag tech companies. Absolutely, um, and I think what's, what we're seeing now more and more is the, the education programs and the offerings uh, by the colleges and MTU uh, have you know, adapted the programs uh, that are offered um, and all of, the, all of the universities and colleges uh, you know, are doing that. There's elements coming in now to each of the, of the agricultural technology, engineering and cultural science programs. Uh, which are looking at the technologies, uh, which are, look, uh, you know, I guess, equipping people um, to meet the future needs that companies have. Um, and I think that's one of the things um, more and more, you know, the companies are adopting to become more sustainable, to uh, bring the technologies into their processes as well as into their products. Um, and the, the, I suppose, the students coming forward, the graduates, uh, you know, one of the challenges, I suppose, is uh, in, in the agri space is attracting students in uh, because I suppose there's other industries as well that are, you know, looking for, for the students coming through. So, but there's great opportunities in the agri tech sector. I think the technology part now is making it very, very interesting uh, to get involved um, and it's, um, you know, it's becoming a very complex uh, landscape and a very challenging one, I guess, for students. Uh, and it's one that there's a, a more a growing interest in, I think, you know, at the moment. Um, I, I might briefly bring in as well, obviously, d down in MTU and down in, in Tralee, my, my hometown, I might <laughs> mention it on the live stream. But uh, the, the ACE, the Agricultural Centre of Excellence, mm -hmm. uh, Agricultural Technology Centre of Excellence. Tell yes. us a, a little bit about that briefly. Yeah, so ACE is um, it's, uh, an, or an organisation, it's uh, Enterprise Ireland funded. It's um, based in the um, North Campus in the Kerry uh, part of MTU. 
um, and it's offering immersive training solutions, uh, digital immersive solutions. So um, I suppose looking into the future, you know, we see that more and more of these technologies, for example, could be used in the service side for companies. Um, so for example, if Unison have machines going out to uh, across the world, that there might be opportunities using digital technologies like AR, VR, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, to be able to uh, communicate with people on the ground in the other countries. So customers can test drive it from across the world. You could test it, but also yeah. you could use it for, for servicing. So your service engineers, for example, could be here in Ireland, and you could be able to uh, troubleshoot issues or support with maintenance activities on the machine uh, remotely. So rather than having to travel, these kinds of technologies now are, are, able, are enabling us to do that in a much more uh, efficient way, you know. Yeah, and, and when we're talking about farmers, Podrick, as well, I suppose the schemes are vital here. The likes of your TAMs and everything like that, that's crucial. It, it is, and I think TAMs are only starting to catch up on, on some of the ag tech um, technologies that are out there that can actually help farmers. I know there's a new TAMs round uh, coming out now in, in a number of months. Um, I think it's going to be vital that, that there's more agri-tech uh, solutions on that TAMs round just to help farmers and help them on the journey. And labor is one of the huge, huge components on farms at the moment. People just cannot get skilled labor. Yeah. So they're looking to auto automate more and more processes on farm, you know, which is vital. And we need times there to, to help the likes of that. Yeah, and are you finding a skills shortage? Are you finding trying to attract people into to your own company yeah, I, and to, to other agri-tech companies? Yeah, I think it's, it's becoming more and more of a challenge. Uh, ironically enough, I think COVID has made it more difficult because most ag-tech companies were based outside of Dublin. So a lot of people might wanted to have relocated back to their hometown and, and work. But now with the advent of remote working, they can still command um, Dublin wages, but live outside of Dublin. So it's very hard for SMEs to really compete with that. Um, you know, if you have your Googles and your Facebooks coming, offering quite incredible wages, to be honest, um, you know, for especially for programmers. Um, that the, SMEs, the lure there, that's, that's yeah, yeah that's very hard. And, and yeah. SMEs simply can't can't compete with that. So it's very difficult to to train uh, to, to, to to attract uh, and retain the right um, tech staff to, to really drive your business forward. Absolutely. Uh, Mark, we did mention that there, there was lots of awards uh, that Unison uh, have recently uh, been presented with. Uh, can you, uh, it's, uh, there, I think there was something in the UK as well, was there? There was. Yeah. We actually, for the new product we brought out, the Smart Micro Dairy, we actually were in the Cream Awards and we won the innovation category. And as the lads touched on, it's all about innovation, it's all about technology. And as we're talking about there with regards to working with ACE, we were thinking about how, because the Smart Micro Dairy is actually quite big, it's around seven metres by three and a half, and it's quite costly to actually bring to trade shows. So we can use this technology to actually have AR and VR at the trade shows it's so awesome. the customers can interact with regards to us not actually having to bring the equipment over because the cost of actual transport at the moment has gone through the roof. And I don't know if you guys have had any issues with regards to transport or anything. This thing, it's just... Transportation yep. prices has probably tripled in, tripled in the last uh, 18 months. Like it's, just, it's, it's really getting difficult even to do business abroad because of the transport. We're an island nation which makes it that bit more difficult again, I think. Yeah. So those kind of technologies can really help in that. Then. So rather than taking you know, three or four machines to a show, you might take one machine and have your technology showing off the rest of your offering. You know. Yeah, and I suppose that's to, to, to wrap it up, I suppose this all needs to have value for the farmer at the end of the day because there, there's a huge investment being made on, on farm and I'll just throw it out to you, obviously in unison you, you want to make sure that the farmer is seeing value for, for these innovations because they're putting their trust and their money into this as well. Oh, without a doubt and it's not trust the money, they're putting their time and their effort and there's a lot of paperwork involved in getting up and going and at the end of the day, to be honest, I feel pride when I actually see these guys and I go up and taste their milk and I know exactly the cow where I'm drinking the milk from, same day, fresh produce and these are just normal guys that just want to make an extra few few quid and just get more value for their milk and it's just great to see it's real success yeah i mean that that is the, the success of a product really isn't it podrick that farmers are seeing the value on the ground for this there, there has to be a return from the farmer and that return might be financial it might be um labor you know but there has to be a return for any solution a farmer implements on farm if there's not farmers simply won't won't adopt it um and then the company doesn't work so um, I would always say to companies, are you sure you're solving a problem and are you sure you're solving a problem that a farmer is willing to actually pay to be solved? You know, and they're two very, very important questions. And I'd just like to say, I suppose, um, AgTech Ireland is an industry body. We're uh, trying to promote, advocate and enhance AgTech in the island of Ireland. And um, 
we're bringing all of industry together to see where we can collaborate and work with other stakeholders within the, within the industry as well. Yeah, so if, if people want to know more to, to search Ag Tech Ireland. Ag Tech Ireland. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And is that something, Kieran, that you would see as well, that there has to be at the end of the day, that the farmer has to be front and centre in oh, this as well? Absolutely. Just as the guys are saying there, the farmer needs to see the value. And uh, we, we talk a lot about technology adoption in farming. Uh, if the if the technology offering is meeting the let's say value add uh, criteria, then it'll be adopted. We've seen that, um, you know, during the COVID um, pandemic, we've seen that you know where we were, the farmers weren't able to take the take animals to the mart. We were then very quickly selling animals online, um, you know, using technology to enable that to happen. So that was embraced very very quickly, and you know, once the technology offerings, you know. Um, are showing a value for the farmers and they'll be they'll be embraced you know excellent well gentlemen thank you so much for joining us here at the agri land pavilion here at the national plowing championships Podrick hennessy chair of ag tech ireland kieran o'donoghue who is a educational outreach officer with the munster technological university and is also involved in the agri tech cluster and mark hanrahan who's involved as a sales engineer in the multi award winning unison process solutions based down in limerick thank you gentlemen and now we're going to go right back out into the field to catch up with some more of the action here at the Ploughing Championships.